everybody, glad to have you here. In today's video, I seek to answer the question, did e.l.f. dupe it? I feel like e.l.f. releases tons of new products all the time, and with a lot of their new releases, I will instantly think, like, wow, that seems like that product is practically fashioned after an existing high-end item that I might already have or know about. I'm not saying they're trying to be copycats with all their products, but I do think in some cases it would appear they're really trying to um, create an affordable alternative to some things that are already on the market. And the five things I'm going to mention in this video, these are things that just came to me casually as I was like in the shower. That's that's where all my ideas really come from, let's face it. But I really think I have even more items in my collection. If I really started digging through, I think I would find some more comparisons as well. The first product I want to mention, the high-end one, is the Smashbox Photo Finish Hydrating Under Eye Primer. This sells for $29 and e.l.f. has a hydrating under eye primer that is $3. And both of these to look at them, they actually have a very similar appearance, just the product itself, kind of a light pink tone, um, but they do have different textures. The Smashbox one seems a little bit thicker and a little more like a true primer. I feel like when I add it to my under eye area, I'm applying something different than just an eye cream. It has actually some smoothness to it. It really does seem to smooth out that area somewhat. The e.l.f. one really seems thinner in consistency, almost like a lightweight moisturizer that you're just putting on your under eye area. It actually seems thinner than a lot of eye creams I might use. The whole concept of these I think is a little bit gimmicky. I mean I wouldn't say oh my gosh everybody needs a product like this because if you're prepping your skin with a moisturizer and you're going in with some sort of eye cream you're really taking care of that added hydration that the eye area needs. And I didn't feel like either of these actually did a good job in keeping anything from creasing or really enhancing the staying power of concealer and things like that. So I guess my answer is no, I don't think e.l.f. duped this product um, because I really don't think they're the same consistency at all. My honest opinion on these is that I don't think they're absolutely necessary. I actually really am loving the CeraVe eye cream. It comes in a nice little tube, use it AM, PM. It has kind of a thick, almost balm-like consistency. It's not greasy, but I think it really hydrates the under eye area nicely. Next product is something that I have praised long before this video, actually back around Christmas time I was talking about how much I love this Smashbox contour kit. This actually comes with a brush and it sells for $45. The products have a very creamy texture, it's really nice quality, and it's just simplified. You know, these are the contouring shades I think you really get use out of. But then I practically had to eat my words on that palette when e.l.f. came out with their contouring kit. This is only $6 compared to the $45 from the Smashbox and you're actually getting one extra shade that has a little shimmer. But as you see these swashed, I've got Smashbox on top, e.l.f. on the bottom. I mean, they really have mimicked the tones that are in the Smashbox palette. I think the bronzy type shade is just a little softer from e.l.f., just a little less intense. But honestly, I can achieve the very same look from both of these products. You'll probably see these showing up like head to head in a half and half face video that I do. And the neat thing about this is if you've got multiple e.l.f. palettes in this style, like maybe you've got a blush palette and there's some part of this that you find you're not using, you could pop in a blush and also have that element. You know, if you want to, you can kind of customize these depending on what you've purchased. But I just love the depth that this cool tone shade gives me. I can get a little light bronzy look as well. And then this shade here is so buttery and creamy. Um, a little goes a long way when you put this on your brush, but it really does brighten. And I think a lot of highlight shades in palettes like this actually turn out to be really sheer and don't do enough. So I would say, yes, e.l.f. did do it on that one. The next product is the Becca One Perfecting Brush. Mine needs to be cleaned, but I did talk about this in a video I did on Becca products, and this sells for $49. So not a cheap thing, but the claim with this is that this could replace a lot of other brushes that you use. They say it can be used for your creams, your liquids, your powders, um, foundations, bronzers, contours, whatever basically you use on your face, even blush. I actually really like this for cream blush. I've liked it for contour as well. This is the kind of brush that's just really not for everyone because it's not going to give you the amount of precision the smaller foundation brush is going to have, but at the same time there are some people out there who are going to love the idea that they can replace a bunch of brushes with one. But e.l.f. has come out with the ultimate kabuki brush and it is, I would say, comparable in size. It's not the exact same thing, but as far as function goes and how well the e.l.f. one performs those various tasks on your skin, uh, I really think it does 
does a nice job. It's actually different kinds of bristles on both. These are, I believe, a goat hair bristle and these are synthetic. But I find the e.l.f. one to be uh, slightly fuller, you know, a little more width to it as you look at it in that way. And it's very, very soft. And so I use this to blend over my foundation today. Um, I thought it actually did a really good job of that. Again, you're going to struggle a little bit to get around the smaller areas, but just all over the face it works well. I used it to kind of tap out my concealer. It also did well patting on some powder all over the skin and even a little bit of contour. I think you'll find if you get this brush, you're rarely going to be using the whole brush at one time. You're going to be like using an end or using the edge of it. It's only $10. I think if you were wanting to experiment with a larger multitasking type brush, I would say go with the e.l.f. Did e.l.f. dupe it? I actually think e.l.f. improved upon the idea with this one. Next up, I want to talk about a lip product. Again, this was a much loved product in my collection. I haven't actually busted it out in a while, but it's a really cool product. It's from IT Cosmetics. It's called the Vitality Lip Flush, and this particular shade is called Je ne sais quoi, and it looks like almost a transparent pink, but this goes on your lips. It's very, very nourishing. It's got a lot of great hydrating ingredients, but it shows up on your lips with kind of this berry pinkish stain, and actually some people might find that it varies somewhat, um, depending on your skin tone, your natural lip color, and now e.l.f. has come out with the Gotta Glow Lip Tint. I actually really like the packaging that they've done here. It seems a little more high-end, a little more substantial than some of their other lip products. As you check them out here in the tube, they look exactly the same, and they actually look just the same on my lips. I put the IT Cosmetics on my top lip, the e.l.f. on the bottom lip. They take on the very same slightly deeper pink hue compared to the way they look in the tubes. I feel like these both stain in a very similar way also. As the shine wears off, I feel like I've still got the same look from each. The texture of the IT Cosmetics feels just a teeny bit thicker, like a little more balm-like. And ELF's is a little bit thinner, but did ELF dupe it? I really think they did. If you're curious about this kind of a product, you can really save some money by trying the ELF one. I'm going to talk about my Mali Poreless Face Defender. It's really a touch-up type of product. Basically, you've got a clear balm-like thing in here. And um, when you swirl your finger in it, I've said this before, but you could you know, run your finger in this for an hour and then look at it and see no visible product. Um, your finger would look matte, <laughs> um, but you wouldn't actually see a buildup of product on your skin. And that's really what makes this special. I have tested this against several different products. CoverGirl has come out with something that tried to be kind of similar to it. Benefit has Dr. Feelgood, which again is a little bit different texture. Everything that I've tried that kind of comes close to this actually ends up being more of a creamy product. And yes, it can function to mattify, but my issue with all of these is that they still show up on my skin. And ELF's is that same way. It's even a little worse than the CoverGirl, in my opinion, for having that kind of whitish residue on my skin. You know, we're talking about similar claims from a product, but they're totally different consistencies. The e.l.f. actually, like, you can see peaks almost when I pull my finger up off of this. It's very creamy. Now, when I dab this over oily skin, you know, it should mattify. This is marketed as a touch-up mattifying type product, but I feel like I end up seeing caked makeup when I dab this on my nose, for example. It's like oil has broken down your makeup and you're seeing shine. And I would almost choose the shiny look than the look I get when I dab this over the shine. And then I start to see like little borders and edges of the remaining makeup that's still on my face. And it just doesn't work out. I will continue to try every product that I think might be coming close to duping this face defender, but so far nothing has. So I hope this video was informative for you as far as some of the e.l.f. products that seem to be really close to certain high-end alternatives. I would say three out of five picks isn't too bad. I really enjoyed the contour kit. This brush, for people who are interested in this kind of a brush, um, again, I don't think maybe it's everyone's cup of tea, but if you wanted to test it, $10, you might feel a little more safer going with that than the near $50 brush from Becca. And this lip product, pretty cool stuff. But I really appreciate it if you give this a thumbs up if it was helpful, and please tell your friends if they're e.l.f. fans. Thanks, guys. I'll See you later.